Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of PowerShell and today we're going to go take a look at some PowerShell code for running background tasks. We're going to take a look at the job system within PowerShell and how to store jobs for background running code, retrieve the information and the output from those jobs. We are also then going to go and have a look at PowerShell schedule tasks and how to actually take our code and run it at a specific time of day and even repeat that operation to be able to dump that to text files that we can then retrieve from other computers as well. So please hang around and if you enjoy the content, remember hashtag like and subscribe and let's get straight into creating background tasks with PowerShell jobs. All right then guys, let's get straight into this with the jobs system. Now, say if you have a commandlet, like for example, get dash service, uh, let's do dash name, and let's do dash bits. Okay, if we run that command, we will get an output to the shell. Now, what about if we run a much longer command, like for example, get dash child item, and let's do this, c colon backslash recurse, that is now going to list every single file and folder inside this computer. Um, that's going to take quite a while to complete, and it's going to lock up my shell until it is. So I'm going to cancel that out. But what you might want to do with these longer running jobs is maybe run them in the background. Now to do that, I'm going to just take this out for a second. We're going to reuse this get dash service and we're going to use a special command called start dash job. Okay, this is going to send this to a background process. Let's clear off this shell down here to keep things nice. And to do this, we just need to pop this inside a script block script block on start job. Just like that. Now, if I run this, what's actually going to happen is I'm going to get a job. And you can see down here, I have a job ID number and a job name. Now, I didn't give the name of this job. I could do another one and give it an actual name if I wanted to. So let's do start job, get service name, spooler, and go and give that a name of get spooler if I really wanted to. Put that in some double quotes, run that, and now I have another job. If I run get dash job inside here, you'll see I have two jobs running, job one and get spooler, with two different unique ID numbers, ID number one and ID number three. Right, so I've got no output for this yet. You'll notice that these jobs have completed. Why have they completed? Well, quite simply because it does not take too long to run these commands and get the results. Now I need some form of output. Now to do this, what there is, is there's another command called receive dash job okay and it would help if i could spell receive there we go not receive dtc diagnostic receive job here we go and now we can give a job name or we can actually give an id for the job that we actually want to receive so if i do job id one which was this first background job here, uh, this job which is related to get service bits, and I go and run just this single line of code, you'll see the output has been sent to the shell. Now the problem with the received job is that that output was sitting in memory waiting to come across uh, to go somewhere, and it's just dumped it to the shell, but it didn't copy it to the shell. It basically cut and pasted it to the shell. So that means if I try to receive this job again, the output, there's nothing there. If I didn't send it somewhere to be stored, this thing's gone. Um, you can kind of get around that. So if I do job three, uh, which was the second job down here, the get spooler job, and I use this special little parameter, it just says keep, it means it is never gonna be removed from memory and I can keep retrieving that over and over again. Now, the best way that you should actually do this is to receive your jobs and actually send them to some form of variable. So you do something like spooler, uh, spooler output, uh, get rid of that receive there. Oh, sorry, I'll get rid of that receive, put a space in there. Uh, equals receive job ID three and go and run that. Now when that actually runs and receives the information, it's got somewhere to go. It's being sent to this variable. I can now retrieve this variable and do stuff and things to it. So that's a very 
basic job system. If we're running some longer jobs, though, things get a bit weirder. So if I run start dash job and I'll do that script block again, but I will do this with get dash uh, child item and we will list out the entire hard drive again. All right. This is not going to be fun for the computer. Uh, let's just give it a name and we'll give it a name of long because it's going to be a long running job here. Okay. So that's going out. It's got ID five. That's currently running. Now, if I run get job, uh, inside the shell, you'll notice that this thing is actually running and it's going to take quite a long time to complete, but it doesn't matter. I can get on with other stuff. This is great in your scripts because you can take long running components of your scripts, send them to a background job. And when they're done, you can come and collect those things later on when you can see the state of it is actually set to completed. But if I've got something like this, I could still retrieve stuff, but there is a bit of an issue here. And if I do a receive item, or sorry, a receive job, again, tabbing to DTC diagnostics there, uh, with a job ID of five, if this is a long running job, we have to be very careful with this. Because if I receive job ID five and the job is still running, what we have is this situation. Say, for example, your output is actually going to be numbers one, two, three, four, and your script is still running and it's just generating numbers, right? If I decide to receive this job now, I'm going to receive these four numbers outputted to maybe some sort of variable, something I want to store it in. That's fine. But this job is still running. It's still going. So these first four numbers are now deleted from memory after I've received them. The job's still going and it's still now writing five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on and so forth. I then have to do another receive job to another variable um, in my environment. And then maybe afterwards combine those two variables together. In reality, the better way of doing this is to make sure that when you're doing this receive job for a long running job, and you basically just want to kind of check the status, the kind of output you're getting, you've got to remember that keep switch. Otherwise, things will go very wrong and you'll have missing data everywhere. So I can still see there's the output. I can control C that. I could also uh, pipe that out to, whoops, pipe that out to a file should I want to. So I could do something like, uh, let's just go into CD desktop. So I've got permission to do it. So we could do something like dot backslash output dot txt, and I could go and send that output to output dot txt. Uh, admittedly, oh, sorry, access is denied at the moment. So it's because I'm not running as administrator on here. Uh, I'd have to send that to a different location. But either way, you could send that as an output to a text file and go and stream it out if you really wanted to as that's working. So that's the basic job system. But the problem here is if I go and close this environment, I go, go and close this const, uh, context at the moment and load up another PowerShell ISC over here, I go and run get dash job again and I have no jobs because it's just related to that single PowerShell session. What we can do, though, is a different type of job um, if we really want to. If we want to have continuously running jobs, we can do something else. We can do a scheduled job. Scheduled or scheduled? Scheduled, scheduled, so tomato, tomato. I don't know. Um, I don't think it's that. that's, that's English UK, English US. Scheduled, scheduled. Like aluminum or aluminium. Eh, don't care if you invented it. It's still aluminium. And color has a U in it, okay? Um, and T, T does not go in the for Christ. Kit. Tea, microwave, uh, uh no, we get a kettle. We boil the kettle and we met I'll do a thing on tea later on. It's fine. So what we want to do here is we want to set up a trigger, okay? And there's a couple of components to this. It's not just one command. We have to set up a new job trigger to tell us when we want this job to actually occur. So we've got things like days of week, random delay, if you're feeling lucky, uh, weeks interval, days interval, and so on and so forth. But if I just choose daily here, we can do daily at 3 a.m., okay, if we want to. Uh, I need to give that some caps. 
And then what I want to do is I want to maybe set some options inside here. So the options for this might be new dash scheduled job option. And there are a number of scheduled job options we can add, like for example, require network, wait to run, continue going on battery, all sorts of stuff. But I want this one start if on battery. Because scheduled tasks might be, if you're running on uh, laptop mode or battery saver mode, they might not actually run um, unless you've got that uh, scheduled job option turned on there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a little bit of a longer code. We're actually going to run the job that we want to run. So we're going to do register dash uh, scheduled, oops, register scheduled job. We're going to name this uh, process job inside here. And we're going to pop in a script block. And within this script block, we're going to run get dash process. That's all. That's all it's going to run. Get dash process. That's fine. Now, this schedule job, I could inside here not just put code, I could go and put an existing PowerShell script in here if I really wanted to, that would be fine. And then I could do dash trigger, and then the trigger is going to be dollar trigger. It's the one that we set earlier in this code, and the scheduled job option is going to be dollar options. Okay, that's perfectly fine. If you're ever in PowerShell ISE and you find yourself writing out these long commands, they're kind of going off to the side, uh, there's a little trick you can do. If you take a command and you split it down to a new line, we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, notice the color of that trigger there, it's sort of like a deep blue. And then we put it down here and it goes to sort of like a light blue. That's going to break the commandlet because it's trying to treat that on a new line as if it is another commandlet. That's not going to work. But if we come in here right at the end and we pop a back tick right here, and then we go and try that again. So notice I've got a back tick on the end. Drop that down. Oops, sorry. Drop that down there. And you'll notice it's going to continue on perfectly fine. It's still a deep blue. It's still like a uh, parameter. So that's where you can kind of neaten things up. Now, if I run that, done. I have a job ready to go out. In reality, what you'd normally do with a scheduled job is within here, you would go and output that and output that to some sort of output text file uh, somewhere inside your environment uh, so that you could go and collect this data later on if you wanted to. Now, this scheduled job is going to run at 3 a.m. That's fine. It's going to go and run get process at 3 a.m. Admittedly, nothing's going to happen if it runs get process because it's just running get process. But if I send it to an output file, I'll be able to collect it later on. Remember, if you are sending stuff to an output file like this, it will overwrite it every single time. So at 3 a.m., it will completely wipe that text file out and write it with new data from the next day and the next day and the next day, unless you put the parameter on of append. Uh, in fact, to do that, I'm going to need to do this in long form. You need to do this as out file and then give it a file path of where you want it to go. So out.txt and then make sure you've got this switch on the end, append. And if you've got append, it means that you'll get your data inside that text file and it will keep adding to that text file as you go down on a list. Okay. Now, that's all cool. We register that schedule job. If I run it again, um, it's going to it's going to error out on me because there's already a job with that name. Let's do process job two on there, uh, just to run another schedule job for the heck of it. Now, if I do get dash scheduled job, you'll be able to see both of them here, but you can also see them somewhere else. If you go to task scheduler old school task scheduler. There is a section down here underneath the task scheduler library. We've got Windows and then we've got down here, we've got PowerShell and scheduled jobs. Notice there's nothing in here at the moment because it was already open. But if I go and refresh this window, there's my two jobs processes that I have just created. So if I go and have a look at this process job, click on the properties of it, you'll notice there it is running. That's fine. There's the trigger that I specified. I could go and edit this. I could go and adjust it. It doesn't matter. Uh, I could also come in here and see the actions. And you can see it's actually running PowerShell.exe and it's going to run my code. So that's basically it really, guys. That's scheduled jobs in PowerShell, and that's also the job system in PowerShell. Quite quick and straightforward to the point. I hope you enjoyed this content, and next time, um, 
I don't quite know what I'm going to go into next time. You'll have to stick around and find out. Hope you enjoyed this content, guys. Hashtag like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.